And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of ten te <coughs> temples, jeez, I fucked up my own intro, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, as, with me this time around is a returning good brother to the temple. Creator of Do creator of Dawn, Star and City, and prevalent to this, Heaven or Hell, and and following through on a little idea that I pi that I pitched a while ago. The one and only, the man who is in a good the man who is in a good mood, the man better known as jo as um Joel Happy Hill. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I'm Joel, in a good mood today. <laughs> well, I suppose so I suppose someone has to be. It's true. It's true. Well, last time that last time that I had you on, I had spent a bit of time just going through random characters through random fighting games and how you and how you might adapt them into the heaven or hell system. Which, as I understand, you're you're um setting you're either setting up your you already have done a tournament for it. Yeah, it's going to be in in three days, uh, as of the recording. Uh, we were just set, we're just setting up for a while, and it's happening on the seventh. Yeah. And this is in this is in between a certain person on the Discord being a little bit too aggressive when it comes to getting people to play. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to name names, but he knows who he is. Uh. I only know about it because I end up getting I end up getting pinged every every time. Yeah, I try to I try to make it so that uh, things don't get out of hand, but yeah, only so much, only so much I can do. But after we did that interview, I had pitched to you the idea of of going through one game's roster and seeing how we might adapt the characters within it into the Heaven or Hell system. Yes, yes, we did talk about that. Now, there were two that I had that I had in mind. One of them was DNF Duel. The other one was, as you can as you can see, the one I ended up picking, Samurai Showdown 2019. Now, admittedly, I went with that one because it won a coin flip, but it would have been for the best to go with Sam to go with Sam Show because. Heaven or Hell has a very has a very clear um, Arxis bent. Definitely. And nothing wrong with that. I, lo I love me some Arxis myself, but I want. But it'd be it'd be a far it'd be a far more interesting demonstration of what this system can do if we venture outside. If we venture outside of the of the obvious entries within Arc system works. Yeah. Besides, a few days ago you had put up a video detailing how you'd adapt Happy Chaos, which is why something like Guilty Gear was going to be off the menu. <laughs> yeah. So, I have in front of me the full roster for, for Sam Show 2019, including including the DLC characters, and we're going to go through them and see and see how we'd adapt them into 2H's system. As best as we're able to, some of them are going to be easier than others. We've got a total of thirty in front of us. I know some might some might say, "Why not go with say Street? Why not go with, say Street Fighter?" Well, I wouldn't want us to do say Street Fighter Six and then and then have to retroactively do it when DLC characters start coming out for it. Yes, that will be a bit annoying to cover, uh, assuming they have a second season. Yeah. So let's get let's get right into it. Starting off with um Amakusa. Shiro Toki Shiro Tokisada Amakusa. The recur the recurrent asshole throughout the series. Their big hair themselves. Uh 
Yeah, this I was I'm looking over uh the wiki right now and this is a strange fucking character. All of their normals seem to have a sort of projectile element to them. They've got trap set up specials and they just seem kind of seem like a classic, you know, fighting game villain character. Some weird way to control the screen, probably some high execution mix, uh, and uh, purple visual effects. All the things you need to make a good villain in, in a fighting yeah. game. And to be, f- and in all fairness, this is, um, he's been, Amakusa has been a, rec- has been a recurring villain throughout the franchise. Mm. And one of the other reasons I wanted to go with Sam Show is having a having a sl- having an emphasis on um on a, on a slightly slower speed, but with a lot more high damage weapons, as opposed to something like King of Fighters, which I should note I had I never had any intention of going with King of Fighters for for this because that's way too many characters for <laughs> us to work with. Yeah, they they uh, have quite a few in all of their games. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fatal Fury or Art of Fighting might be on the table, but I don't want to touch Art of Fighting again. It looks like Garu, which has a lot of the or Garo, which has a lot of the uh, KF characters, but it's much smaller roster. Yeah, I like Gar- I like Garo. It's just Art of Fighting. I have a complicated history with. Mm. Namely, namely the fact that it found new and interesting ways to kick the shit out of me back then. <laughs> that will happen. Because Art of Fighting Two is SNK boss syndrome on every character. Cool. <laughs> that does sound uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, but um, Amakusa is is def is definitely definitely range heavy and definitely uh and de- definitely a lot of keep away. Mhm. I think a lot of the most interesting things that I'd want to replicate here from looking at the trailer is first of all their trap setup move which allows them to set down the orb in a variety of positions and get uh some good mix off of it or some good setup for their mix with their normals as well as uh they have what looks like a sort of invincible like akuma dash with the after images which I think is a very interesting combination on this otherwise kind of traditional uh, like setup zoner. And going off of the trap first, I think there is a pretty obvious parallel if you played Heaven or Hell, which is Illusionist. They are sort of built all around that idea of setting up specific positions to gain advantage with their magic mirrors, teleports, um, long-ranged uh, attacks that go off of those mirrors and parries. Yeah, and I'm guessing. Would you have it that they'd be that somebody wanting to channel Amakusa would do pure illusionist, or would you uh, mix any others? I think uh, not only for the thematic relevance, but also due to how much they seem to emphasize mix-up in the wiki. Uh, you could also throw in some levels of bastard. Uh, as it provides powerful options to use when you have a setup. Um, They offer some of the most powerful attack options to use against someone who is at disadvantage from you, not only because they allow you to break your opponent with a lot of ways to further throw them into disadvantage until they reach their limit, but also with big slow options that provide you a lot of advantage in the future. Hmm. Uh, And with a few levels in each, depending on what tier you're at, maybe you could get three and illusion is two and bastard if you're at tier three um you could set up a lot of those same situations with the long-range options from the illusionist uh letting you get in and set up for a big ol' uh headbutt from bastard or something like that Mm -hmm. so next up is one of the is one of the more infamous guest appearances Mm. That being Biken, aka what happened when, when um, <laughs> when Daisuke Ishiwatari watched Roroni Kenshin and thought and thought and thought Kenshin was a woman. Mm. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it is funny that we mentioned that we were going to do Arx's stuff here as she is the second character that is coming up. Uh, but, yeah, I guess I, I'm quite familiar with the bike in, in the Guilty Gear game, so it's not much uh, I have to do research-wise. It seems like in Sam Show, she is more so, of course, leaning into the Sam Show general playstyle of it being a much slower-paced game with... Uh, big normals that delete your health uh, on counter hit. Hmm. With some additions from her home game uh, of some stronger combo options in the air, as well as her... Looks like she has her block parry from uh, Rift 2. Hmm. And in that case, I imagine... I didn't talk about a talent with our first character, uh, Amakusa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I imagine that anyone who wanted to play a Rev 2 Biken uh, or any variation of that would have to pick up Catch the Blade as one of their talents, allowing you to have a parry on every move slot so long as you can correctly guess what your opponent's move is going to be. Uh, which, of course, is very much in uh, theme with what her ever-present parry options do. Mm -hmm. I'd... The, the way they describe it is... is, is being a, being a, a mid-range... being a mid-range aggressive type. Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, in that case, in terms of archetypes, of course, we got Blade Sage which is sort of built to do a lot of this uh, Sam Show spacing-based uh, stuff where they can get really good damage uh, and some combo options in that correct spacing. Uh, and on top of that, I guess, I think it might just be as simple as that. You got some Blade Sage with possibly... Blade Sage also gives you a parry. This very much is the bike in option. Mm -hmm. I guess if you had extra levels, you'd want to put that into something like... Maybe Dancer, as it would allow you to get some uh, more of her like advancing moves that she has with her advancing like sort of uppercut move. I don't remember the name of it. I think it's one of her options off of parry. Uh, by using a dynamic entry, you could get uh, a dodge to provide another option for parry, as well as a good combo option to mm -hmm. give her some more of those Rev 2 combos. Yeah. Uh, and it is... It is in, it is interesting that you mentioned Catch the Blade earlier, since that's... Ca since It'd, it'd be redundant to bring that up here because everybody has it and everybody has um, blade catch in some form. Oh yes. Through the actual mechanic of it, being able to lose your weapons and stuff is a pretty big part of the the Sam shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So next is Basara. Sara, demon wind shuriken. Uh. I fuck. I love how this guy looks so much. Um, <laughs> this is exactly the kind of type of character I was talking about uh, before we started. That is like goofy and 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 just a weird mean guy that I would want to pick up, but then probably go to the show though instead. Mm -hmm. uh, from the trailer, it seems like a lot of kind of like Axel-esque button zoner options with some extremely active projectiles. Teleport, DP, this guy's got everything. Mm -hmm. uh, his his main game, Basara's main game is, has been to force people into making a mistake just by just by, fr just by um, sheer frustration when it comes to his zoning. Hmm. Kind of seems in a lot of ways like Dalsim with the button zoning and teleport options. 
And in that case, I think I would go for normally say something like Blade Sage again for a button zoner just due to the fact that it is the closest thing to that without any long lasting projectiles and stuff. But with this one specifically, I think you could go with uh, a combination of Battle Witch and Ninja. With Ninja having a lot of the sort of sudden back movement uh, and forward movement options in the game mm -hmm. that is sort of based around being able to very suddenly change your position and make people move miss through outranging them uh, in situations where you normally wouldn't be able to. And Battle Witch having a lot of these staple projectile and long-ranged options that are sort of central to any keep-away game plan. Yeah. And with a combination of that, you can do a lot of what I see them doing in this trailer of setting up a projectile or pressure option from long range and then going in suddenly for a close range option to beat out what they're trying to do to avoid that future pressure. Yep. So next is is a returner from two, and that is Cham Cham. Mm-hmm. She's got like she's got a boomerang. Mm hmm Got cat hands. Um, since we've had we've had a couple strong zoner we've had a couple strong zoners before this, and <clears throat> unfortunately, Cham Cham is not is not all that good at that. She's got some range, she's got <laughs> some range effects, but not but not but not as much. Seems to also be brawling with that uh, boomerang. Yeah, I'm not exactly expect from from it, but definitely more so just kind of pressing those buttons and getting in on people. Mm -hmm. uh, this might be something like just almost like kind of the most vanilla build I found in Heaven or Hell. Well, this is what a lot of people end up going with for their first characters. Uh, this might just be like a dancer bastard. Um, it gives you a lot of the best just straight up uh like offensive buttons without much other catches to them they don't have exceptional range they don't have an exceptional they have all right movement with the inclusion of the dancer kit uh their damage is good so long as they get in the right situation with bastards abilities but all around they just sort of are that uh average aggressive character archetype yeah Granted, Cham Ch as far as as far as being aggressive, it it's hard to do he it's hard to do heavy movement with Cham Cham because there's a lot of there's some really obvious startup with her, mm. and then maybe more so of if he's like a if I'm right in thinking right now that she's a sort of Blanca uh, with these advancing attacks that are. Uh, like counterable, then it might be funnily. You might put one level into the grappler archetype as the first level of it gives you a like full screen advancing move that allows you to get in. But if it's blocked, you're kind of fucked. Um, as and make that a a main form of like moving with them. That could mm -hmm. could be something interesting to do. So, next is is one who's been a favorite for a, for quite a while, mm. and that that being um, Charlotte. Yes, she's the the fencer. Yes, and well, Char the Charlotte big fucking <laughs> shoulder pads. <laughs> you know, I'd say I'd say big shoulder pads, but years of forty k have spoiled me on giant pauldrons. That is fair. <laughs> Oh, but she is she is very she's very much a footsie, as you would expect with someone who is doing the fencer archetype. Yeah. This feels like just straight up the archetypical uh blade sage. So I think this would be the closest thing to the uh the a sort of Shoto character where I imagine someone attempted to recreate Charlie would take like three Blade Sage and then maybe like one flagellant for a dp and then one battle witch for a fireball 
and just like take those two tools into a just full on footsies kit with 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 no, with no other real uh specific goal in mind just fucking press those buttons at that range and get those other two tools to round out your weaknesses yeah but it seems you it seems you see her primarily as a as a pure um blade sage early on yes The archetype is sort of built to uh, emphasize or, like, recreate the fiction of Fencer characters, especially with, like, uh, Marth and Melee, as it has a, a, like, tipper mechanic and not only has good options to use at footsie's distance, but also rewards you for making correct guesses at that distance, even more than other archetypes do. Yeah. And... So next up on the list was is actually one of the one of the bigger newcomers. Um, yes, Darlene I remember Dagger. seeing a lot about uh, this girl when the trailers were coming out. Who, Darley is Darley is very much a rushdown. Mm -hmm. Um, but oddly enough, more of a aerial rushdown. Oh, okay. An air, aerial rushdown, some some good some good bit of um go, some good bit of guard breaking, and qu and quite a few options at mid at um mix up. So rushdown, but not ex but not exactly the typical rushdown because her ground game isn't the best. She ne in order to use her kit at, to, at its best ability, she has to be in the air. I think there are a few things, fun things you could do here. Uh, first of all, this is sort of a, uh, I guess you could say, like a frivolous part of the design, but uh, a lot of those multi-hitting saw moves really are like pulling me in as a, as an aesthetic. And there are some interesting ways you could do that with uh, melee attacks and everyone in hell. Specifically, with, I'm thinking of the repeating specialty, which makes it so that you can. Uh, chain the same move multiple turns in a row without sacrificing your action economy, uh, which allows you to get multiple hits with the same thing one after another and get up some big damage, mm -hmm. which could be an interesting way of representing some of her saw moves given that sort of specialty. Yeah. And with the air uh, stuff, Heaven or Hell is just very recently, I think in like 1 point or 0 point, 1, 1 1.5 point five or maybe six introduced aerial as an actual tag and it like sort of com the, uh, making the air game of it more complex and built into the systems rather than just sort of being an implication of movement uh and with that there are some more uh ways you can approach with that sort of character i think this this would be sort of a character that is defined by your use of talents and specialties rather than archetypes as a lot of what she does can just be like, yeah, you take like a level in dancer to get so, uh, like a, a Black Panther jump like she does there at one point. You can take some Blade Sage stuff because she's got big normals, and you can take some Bastard stuff for uh, like up close guard break stuff. Some of the just classic like brawler archetypes. Yeah. But in terms of how you recreate some of her more like interesting elements, I think there's some cool stuff you could do there. Especially if you take th take into account things like Great Weapon Master to really uh, show off that those big fucking attacks with the uh, big saw weapon and stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So next is the is is one of the classic big guys in the series. Oh yeah, um, good old earthquake. This oh, it's got such a funny face. Oh my god. Uh, I'm, is is the uh, is the dodge a universal mechanic in Sam Show? I think it is, but am I am I thinking of wrong? Okay, um, yeah. That being, I know it would be tempting to give him some ver some variation of super armor, but not ri but not really. Um. If anything, if anything, earthquake strikes me as a as a dive bomber because he's got a lot of um, anti. Gr he's got a lot of ground versus um, not um, ground versus um, air versus ground approaches. Mm, okay, yeah. 
he is he is still a slow he is still a slow boy, um even even by this game's standards, and he do, and um he doesn't have the best recovery. Seeing a character design like this immediately makes me think uh, command grabs. It doesn't actually seem like it seems like this is more so like a buttons based, just kind of aggro character that's got the damage to make up for the lack in speed. Mm -hmm. So I can't take my first instinct, which is to be like, yes, take three levels in Juggernaut and, and send them directly to hell. It wouldn't actually be very accurate now that I'm looking at it. But this is definitely at least one level in Juggernaut as a character. Big bodies are sort of made through the Juggernaut stance, the ability to give yourself a reduced movement in exchange for... Uh, higher damage on your unblockables is kind of what makes your character a big body in this law of the times. Yeah. In addition to giving yourself low speed as a stat. Um, and with the uh, the shoulder charge, the advancing armored move, you could sort of, not exactly through mechanics, but through the use of it, recreate what I saw there. If they had this sort of like ninja vanish that uh, they did into this like Blanca uh, spin across the screen mm -hmm. uh, that could very easily be created through that and other than that but you you see him as a pure juggernaut who who's the no no I think I think that's what I would think from looking at him but I think this is surprisingly like like maybe a dancer. Dancer has a lot of the best like uh, burst approach options with a teleport behind the back. They have a they have like a full screen unsafe kick, and they've got uh, some like big beefy uh, pressure extenders on top of that. Mm -hmm. So despite uh, the the irony of the name, I think Earthquake might be like one level Juggernaut to just make them a big body, and then three levels in Dancer. <laughs> Yeah, I could, I could certainly see it. I, I, the reason I brought that, the reason I brought that up, the assumptions up is it's, it can be very tempting to look at any big body and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is gonna be our, um, command grab heavy who's gonna have super armor. Yeah. Oh, you know your Z your Zangis or your Potemkins. Exactly. It it is very much like the first thing you expect from those sorts of characters. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, but next is Galford. Galford is the dog ninja. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful little guy right there. Uh, <laughs> always remind, always reminded me. Uh, always felt that he wasn't too far removed from Chip. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some influence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was this also? Is this also an American ninja or at least yes. a white ninja? <laughs> Okay, I, I saw that the, the fucking, like, slicked back blonde hair, I was like, oh, this is what you mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he is, he's definitely, he's definitely, um, he's, he's definitely, he's definitely high mobility. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he has a, he has a pretty, he has a pretty fast dash, obviously. Um. Oddly, oddly enough, his air game isn't the, isn't the best. He's a little bit he's a little bit floaty on that front. And um, plasma blade, which is one which is one of his be one of his best options. If you it's it can be it can be easy to um to o to over to overshoot and put and put yourself at a disadvantage. That's the bigger reason why I compared him to Chip. Oh, okay. Um, Chip is a speed demon, but. If you don't know what you're doing, it's very easy to overshoot with Chip. Mm hmm I think the obvious answer to this character is, of course, Ninja. Uh, he is a ninja. I mean, not, not much else I have to say with that part. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I think he only really needs maybe the first... He only really needs the assassination, which is their, their air grab, their, their fucking hidden leaf uh, move right there. Yeah. Um, a lot of the other things actually seem he could he could take the he could take the toss blades he could throw some some shuriken. Yeah. 
Um, but other than that, though the, the tricky... I think managing the dog is the real thing I'd want to like show off here. You know. Yeah, the dog that's, is that's used for a lot of um, for a lot of mix-ups. Mm -hmm. A lot of mix-ups and a lot of setups. I think they might want to take two levels in Battle Witch. They have uh, the Vicious Spirit, which is a, a sort of deployable, um, a, a like deployable projectile that slowly moves across the screen. They've got Hexing Orb, which is a projectile that you can deploy as a slightly slower moving projectile. And the big thing is Commandment, which is a move that they can link into that allows them to m manually move around all of their deployed like uh, attacks uh, into like different spaces. So you you would have them dip into Ninja a bit and then focus on Battle Witch the rest of the way. Yeah, I think in terms of like how you'd play the character, the idea would be something like uh, your 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 win state is to have your your dogs down and being able to uh, use uh, higher resources to command them around and get insane damage off of everything because you can just throw your dogs at them. Uh, but in order to achieve that, you you might want to take two ninja levels to uh, quickly create like burst movement um, and get like some hard callouts to make them a little scared of challenging your setups. Mm -hmm. And um, like one one of the one one of the big setups that get that gets used a lot is is doing stuff like like his. Like back, like backdashing all the way into um, into into stuff like plasma blade because mm. his backdash actually ha actually gives him a, actually has a bit more movement than others and is Ooh. and in some parts is still cancelable. Then that actually would be uh, very fitting as the the ninja archetype gives you a sort of invincible back jump with their smoke bomb. Mm -hmm. So. Next up on the list is Genjiro. Genjiro, yes. This is the big old muscly dude with the red hair. Mm -hmm. I do not know much about this character. So me, me taking a look at this trailer now is going to be sort of from my first exposure to him. Well, he is he is a ver he is a very good close up. He's he's very he. Um, his um, he his heavies are pr his heavies are pretty fast for well heavies. Yeah. Um, a lot of he's he has a lot of he's very much a he's very much a a rush down with a bit of with a bit of mix up that is mostly get mostly going to be on the ground. His air game isn't all mm -hmm. that good, and he has barely any long range presence. From what I'm looking at here, it seems like he's got a big emphasis on like repeated specials and maybe what looks like some Rekkas in there. Uh, as you can chain chain together some of those uh, like fucking board slicing moves. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff with that and just sort of getting in to get those those big those big combos, uh, which in that case might be something like. Uh, a character built around the talent, I think it's Powerhouse, is what it's called. It's a move that makes it so that all of your attacks do additional knockback, and then when you hit someone to the corner, you get to do bigger combos. Uh, which seems pretty, like... That doesn't seem like this guy did a ton of pushback, but in terms of representing that idea of really wanting to get in to get a huge reward in terms of damage, that is one of your better options with that. You could go with denting blows to do some passive damage, but it's much less, um, I guess, impactful uh, than the powerhouse builds, which are often pretty great going along with a bit of Dancer, as they have rapid blows specifically, which is a great um, thing to uh, enable powerhouse plays, since it allows you to create distance by pushing them as well as closing in that same distance. So you you would focus on dancer as far as archetypes go. I think you'd get a bit of that, maybe just for rapid blows. But this this is this is a bastard through and through powerhouse bastard with a with a pinch of dancing. Maybe battle witch if you. I mean, this guy seems pretty bad at mid range. Even though even though he's got um the sword, he's probably not a blade sage. They just kind of all look like that in samurai sojourn because you know samurais are having a showdown. 
The funny thing is, in Japan, the the series is called Samurai Spirits. Yes, I did notice that from some of the trailers. Yep. Um, next is what is one of the one of the new one of the newcomers, and that it mm. and this is a tr- this is a trickier one in Gong Sun Li. I yeah, when I was looking through the roster, I did not recognize this character at all. She yeah, she's one of the newcomers, right? Uh, they made her trailer very dramatic. There's a lot of build up for this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got we've got forty seconds of gameplay for me to look at. Oh, she sets up like a the umbrella on the field. Yep. Is that? Oh, that's that's funny. Oh, she's kind of like oh my god, what's her name in Blaze Blue? Uh, with the staff. If you know Blaze Blue, you know who I'm talking about. But I don't remember her name right now. Lychee, yes. She seems like a bit of a lychee in terms of how that's set up. Uh, that's my first instinct, at least. Um, that's fun. She can like dash to it and stuff. This is the this is the kind of. I think this may be the first one where it's like. This is an archetype I want to design now because I'm not sure how I would do it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. Let me let me let me, let me think this over for a second. It's gotta have some sort of marker that is that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I've got it actually. Um, so there is a specialty in the game. Specialties being effects you can apply to your individual attacks to make them more specialized. Mm-hmm. Um, called Throne where after you resolve it, assuming it is an attack, you get to create a, uh, is it specifically a dagger marker? Yeah, a dagger marker in one of the spaces adjacent to where you targeted. Uh, And stepping on that dagger marker lets you continue a combo off of it, even if you didn't have combo initially, and regain some resources. And what she does with uh, her dash to that, uh, to the the parasol that I saw earlier, Mm I think could be really well represented with that. Obviously, they're not daggers, but no one's going to have a heart attack if you rename your, your tokens to a different thing for flavor. Yeah. Um, so that with... I can't... It seems like she's very focused on that, so I can't really see, like, outside of that, how she would be adapted into an archetype. I guess if you... I'd have to play her a bit, or maybe I'll get some more information on this. Great zoning, tricky teleports, great wind disarm, amazing air control... Okay, okay, so she seems to be uh, a longer-range character with that, so maybe going all-in on Battle Witch, because that way you could also introduce more markers with your deployable shit. Um, and then also going on throw Throne on top of that. You could even take the talent that lets you create a zone where you control your markers. This might not... <laughs> now I'm just thinking of like an optimal marker-based character, but yeah, there's definitely some combination of that with uh, highly prioritizing Throne as one of your traits that could work out. You might want to dip some into Blade Sage if you want to be more mid-range, Battle Witch if you want to be fully long-ranged. This is a very interesting character. This is the type of character I actually would, would enjoy. Maybe... Trying to recreate and playing in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, so next is Hanzo, the, ni- Hanzo, the ninja, the other ninja. ninja to ever ninja. <laughs> I I did look at him and just think ninja, and that is it. So that's well with a name like Hatori Hanzo, you kind of set yourself up for that. Yeah, you kind of that's kind of your only choice at that point. Uh, it's not like you have any other like career paths to go down. You're you're a ninja now. It's what you do. Um. He's got a. He's got a ninja sword. Yep. He's got. He's de- he's definitely ha- definitely he's high on mobility. He's he's. De- he's got a whole lot of teleports. I'd say I'd. I'd look I look at him as a as a high mobility <laughs> command grappler. Ooh. Okay. Um. Because he he has the best command grabs of that you that you can ask for of it of his type. Oh, and, that's fun. Def, definitely definitely likes doing mix ups and com, and command grabs. Um, especially since most of his command grabs have have pretty low recovery. Okay. 
then I think definitely, of course, you need to go into the ninja archetype. Not only because he is the ninja, uh, but it's also got some good mobility options and a command grab, like we mentioned before. It's got assassination, which is the only command grab that can hit characters both in the air and on the ground. Uh, with the only restriction being that you can hit people out of it if you predict it. Uh, and if you have that, along with uh, three levels in Juggernaut, even if you don't use the Juggernaut stance and become a big body, you can use that to get an anti-air command grab, a grounded command grab, a command grab that hits both but is vulnerable to attacks, and the super command grab. And just kind of fucking fly around the screen with all your ninja mobility options and hit people with heaven busters and make them cry. Yeah. <laughs> But he's even got some tossed blades going on here. Yeah, this is this is the ninja ninja ever ninja. Mm -hmm. But next is Hauhamaru, who um, is just the main character, right? Main, more more or less. He's been he's been the poster boy since day one. He is it the in the intention is to ha is that he has a bit of nods to um, Miyamoto Musashi. Oh, okay. Um, he doesn't have the gun though, which is disappointing. I said me. I, I said Musashi, and the first thing you think of is gun. Yeah, did he have a gun? Isn't that? I maybe I maybe off of my history here, but isn't Musashi famous for like uh, being like, "Hey, I'm gonna wear like work boots and carry around a pistol because fuck the fuck the, the the shogun or whatever, or not the shogun, fuck the emperor." What's one no. of them? No. You might be you might be thinking of Nobunaga. Um, um, no, no, it's definitely a Musashi. You might be thinking of the wrong Musashi. Yeah, his whole th he did he did like he did like showing up late to duels and you and using an using a rowing oar as a, as a weapon instead of his sword. Mm, yeah, different just, guy. Okay, just or just doing things to just doing little troll moves to get people off their game, and one part one. One of the book, one of the parts of the Book of Five Rings is him taking the piss on traditional swordsmanship. <laughs> that be that being the that being the Book of Air with an. Uh. I think yeah. he's going to be the. I think he's going to be a tricky one to to do with because. He's as the poster boy. He's kind of meant to be an all around Shoto. Mm hmm. I think uh, it should generally be fine. Uh, are we recording? <laughs> I'm not sure yep. where we start off. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I restarted, I restarted the thing. Nice. Uh, he should be pretty alright. Uh, normally, like when I did my Ryu one, uh, generally the well run Shoto characters invest uh, a few levels into a variety of different archetypes. In this case, I imagine, not not having a projectile, I wouldn't do the usual of giving them a level in Battle Witch along with yeah. Flagellants and Blade Sage. But he's maybe not, this would be. He's not all that good at mi he's not all that good at um, high lows or um, mix ups. And while his it might be interesting to really get into the um, the whole idea of losing and gaining weapons in Sam Show and give them martial artist. Uh, since it has the ability to switch between two distinct stances. Other than that, I imagine it would just be something like uh, a level in Flagellant, level in Blade Sage, maybe a level in Dancer? No, Dancer's a bit too fancy. Uh, no, he's, he's not really, he's not really a footsies. He, again, this is, again, this is the problem with, the, this is the problem with handling the with handling the well-rounded in an archetype system, he's mm -hmm. there's 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 not one there's not one thing that he is meant that he focuses on, um, mm -hmm. and that's that's why characters like him are going to be appealing to first timers because there's all manner of stuff you can dip into. Mm -hmm. There's actually a um, a. In a supplement I'm writing right now, there is a talent I wrote kind of just for that character because of some conversations that some players brought up of the base six options that everyone has access to being pretty strong, uh, which is, how do I call it, 
Fundamentalist, uh, which gives you a bonus in your HP for each uh, technique you're not using. So if you just get, instead of getting the, the 10 usual, if you just have four empty uh, technique slots and use the base six, you get a total 20 bonus to your HP, which is like nearly double for some characters. Uh, which could be an interesting way to go about it, as unlike uh, the, the, the reuse and other like Lauren Shoto's of his type, he doesn't seem to have like a lot of tools outside of just like buttons. Definitely the fireball. And how his foot is. His yeah. fireball is all right, but when it comes to the when it comes to more fo more focused um, ranged characters, he's going to be outclassed. Yeah. Again, again, it's a case of he's good. He's good at a lot of things, but he's not great at one particular thing. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, it's just the issue of heaven or hell doesn't due to uh, its more so artist ins uh, inspirations, it doesn't have enough samurai showdown mechanics for you to be good at. Like, you can take a level in Blade Sage to be good at mid-range, and you can take a level in, in Flagellant to be uh, okay when you're on the defense. But then, like, at that point, it's like, you know, do you don't got much else to spend levels on, and even for a tier 1 character, you know, that's... You need one more level, so... It definitely would be. It'd really depend on how you would choose to play a Hanamaru character yourself. Whether or not you go into like a level of dancer or a level of bastard or a level or another level of blade sage. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then the, next on the list we have one of the other guest characters, um, Hibiki. Uh -huh. oh. I didn't realize she was a guest character. Okay. Now uh, she she's not from Samurai Showdown. She's from The Last Blade, which is another weapon based fighter that SNK had done back in the day. Mm, okay. But she is she's definitely she's definitely far more foot she's definitely far more footsies. I'm not gonna go into the whole. Um, alternate hebe alternate hebe key because that it because that's getting way too much into the weeds. Mm. When I'm looking at the wiki, that's the, the most interesting thing I'm seeing here is that she has like fainted and delayed versions of a lot of her specials, mm -hmm. with a lot of them being sort of stances that she goes into. And in essence, there's a few moves that do function like that in the game, but they're not from uh, the type of thing they'd expect to pick up with this character, you know. There isn't really. There is uh the draw step or step draw. Mm -hmm. What is it called? It's called uh on blade sage on the draw, which does allow you to do a little step into uh, attack with some variations off of it with low and combo, which is more so meant to be the um, mist finder from Johnny, but does work well with her. Uh, beckoning slash that I see here, but outside of that, there is also something I think that could work for her stationary sort of like uh, targeted slashes, which is the adrenaline rush from Flagellant. I think on their second level they get it, where it is a move that uh, puts you into a state where you lose two health, but your next technique gains a number of benefits. And because it is low commitment, if you're at advantage, you can immediately cancel that into an attack and gain the benefits from it. Uh, so you would go blade slage, blade, blade slage, blade slage, and flagellant. <laughs> I think so. Uh, similar to the one before, but a very for very different reasons. I think, um, as she uh, emphasizes two of those moves very specifically. And I feel like there's definitely some talent or something that could further show that idea because that is something that... Faint steps, yes. Uh, there, There is a talent that allows you to uh, cancel your attacking moves into utilities that pull you back to like the last location you were in, which uh, could be used to show a lot of her held uh, inputs and feints and stuff that could allow for some some weird timings. Mm -hmm. So a faint steps, uh, flagellant blade sage, I think. Yep. 
I could, I could, I could certainly see it. Mm -hmm. Um, next is everyone's favorite maid, Iroha. You can't trick me. This is a Fire Emblem character. <laughs> this is <laughs> this this character is from Samurai Showdown. What is she using as those weapons? What the fuck? Those are some big knives. Those are some they're they're, they're shaped so strangely. Um, it, this it is a strange remind, character. It kind of reminds me of a Kukri. Mm. But okay. I'm all for, I'm all for people. I'm all for um strange strange ways to equip characters because Lord knows, um, I am sick of the sword and board approach. I mean, as, as much as I've as much as I've picked on how junk how junkyard dog and en ended up looking like a um, <laughs> a more of a sheath than a than a sword in in um Zerd and um Revelator. At the very le at the very least it is something different. Yeah. And I know one might say, well is isn't your main in Guilty Gear Kai? Yeah, yeah it is. And he <laughs> but I wouldn't I wouldn't say he I wouldn't say he's do even though he's doing the swordsman thing, um I'd say his I'd say Thunder Seal strikes me more as a ba as a bastard sword than it does a long sword. Mm, okay. Especially since there's no shield to go along with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. She's fucking weird. Uh. She she's she's Blanca. <laughs> I think like. What the fuck is this? Is such a strange character you've shown me. I. She's she spins a lot. That's the that's one thing I can tell you. She does spin a lot. Um, she's got a she's got a Tetsuzanko. That's cool. I like that. I could that could be a good rapid blows uh, variation. Um, she does strike me as. I do find it amusing that the wiki calls her a oppressive zoner. That's oh. definitely the, that's definitely the case, especially with her, especially with her flat with her um fireball. That is not what I thought of when I looked at all of their specials. <laughs> but I guess yeah, all right. Oh, this is so weird. I guess maybe you'd want to go for like a a warp mage ranger. Um, as, unlike, uh, I, w I would say Battle Witch, as it is, like, a zoner, but, uh, one, you already use that a lot, two, she doesn't really seem to have any way to deploy future threats, she doesn't have a slow-moving fireball, it looks like, um, so Ranger would make more sense in that case of someone who presents just an immediate, immediate threat at range for existing, um, outside of the Blade Sage distance of, like, fussy characters. Uh, even though I can't, I can't justify the like a bullet resource system. That's just not going to make sense. But in terms of the actual play style, she does fit Ranger quite well. Mm. Uh, if it is true that she focuses a lot on that uh, projectile, I guess no. you would throw on like specialties that allow her to get airborne and use momentum more. Mm -hmm. Maybe a wind elemental mage because it allows you to uh, move in addition to using your attacks. I could I could see that. Uh, even though even though a lot of a lot of her air game can be can be risky. Mm -hmm. Um it's more th and while she's great at mix ups, her mix ups aren't do aren't exactly high damage. Yeah. So there are but I would say I would say I would say the big the big event I would say Iroha strikes me as somebody who'd be very good at the hit and run game. Yeah. I think in that case, Elemental Mage, Ranger, 
uh, or Warp Mage uh, Ranger is exactly what what that would be in terms of playstyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been using a lot of the same combinations before, just because I think a lot of the um, Summer Showdown characters do have the same like skeleton. But this is definitely a, a one that's a bit further outside the mold. <laughs> yeah. So next is next is a name that is going to be f- fairly self-explanatory in terms of his kit, um, Jubei Yagyu. Mm. Yes. Uh, if you're gonna have that kind of name, you're guy. gonna be a ama- you're gonna be doing the master swordsman gimmick. Um, oh yeah. His, but he's the, he's described as more of a, as a, as a bit of a defensive type, especially since his um, especially since he's got a good he has a good amount of reach. Mm. Okay. Um, first thing, of course, I think of is Splade Sage. That is that is their idea. Uh, but it doesn't look like he is sort of, I guess, like flavored to be that uh the fiction of Blade Sage, which is more of that like elegant, highly moving based character. He seems more of like a like a wall. This guy's firm, you know. He's got he's got a a, 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 a fucking moves. He's got some got some moves on him. His got like shoulder batches and shit. I would I would say because because of the fact that he that a lot that a lot of his game is is reliant on ha- on having th- having three different ways to counter it at, at any given time. Mm. Um he's de- he's definitely leaning heavily into people who like to punish. Okay. Okay. Oh, Definitely great, a bit of Blaze Sage there, as it gives you an unimproved parry. Yeah. Uh, um, you know the fr- you've you probably played with f- people who love abusing frame traps. Mm, it's great. It's how you it's how you win uh, like any amount of Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, while he de- while um his his dash is just okay. His he has a good he has a he has a pretty fast walk, um, along with along with the f- along with the fact that his run his running normals are pretty his running normals are pretty good. It's the I've normals, um, you say. Hmm. I guess I guess a good I guess a good way for me to describe him is a um is a ta- is a is a tank buster. Cause okay. Well, the tank build once again would le- would lean heavily into super armor. He doesn't really do that. He's more about he's more about um pun- he's more about punishes, and okay. and um pl- and playing de- playing defense to catch to catch the enemy's mistakes. Okay. Um. That case. I think we might have another bike on our hands with a with a catch the blade bastard blade sage. Uh, I used to have the, the the shield master one, which was a different variation that gave buff to defensive things. But now it's pretty much just catch the blade in terms of talents that are built around that. I don't even know if any of the yeah. I think maybe you'd want to build into momentum with specialties more, as it allows you to actually basically get dashing normals um, and like get like comboable dashing normals. Uh, that. Could work pretty well at adding that on top of it, but this does seem like a character that would be pretty similar to Biken in in Heaven or Hell. Yeah, I I don't I don't I have a hard time seeing um somebody playing somebody playing akin to Jubei um dipping into Dancer because he's not he's not meant to be that kind of mobility. Mm-hmm. Uh. Mm. Seems like fairly cut and dry there, yeah. Mm-hmm. But next to is somebody who is definitely not cut and dry, and that is oh dear, um, okay. Kazuki. Kazuki. Oh, I think I I played a lot of Kazuki when I did play some Sam Show Five. I think it was Sam Show Two. Um, he he blows up right. <laughs> Um, I remember yeah, in a, the one I played, he could just blow up his entire upper body and teleport to the side of the screen. Ah, yes, annihilating flames. 
Beautiful, he beautiful. Is, he is definitely a rushdown, and a a rushdown a rushdown that is all about all about um all about build all about building up. I'm very happy that we just have uh, a pure flagellant three on the board here. Uh, this is a a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, self destructive man right here. Uh, Flagellant 3 is a incredibly, like, violent, um, just, uh, it has all of the most powerful, like, aggressive tools you would want at the cost of sacrificing their own health to use them. Uh, it may not, I'm not sure if Suzuki actually does sacrifice his own health, but, uh, it definitely has that feel with the use uh, of the fire and the literal uh, self-immolation that he does all the time here. Uh, you could take three levels of flagellant. You, of course, you gotta take elemental mage flame. Uh, you can take one level of dancer to give him the, the, the teleport behind you move. Um, this is this would a, be great. In a weird character, roundabout way, he kind of reminds me... I suppose, like, I suppose someone could draw some similarities between him and um, Order Soul. Mm, yeah. Um, especially, especially since his um, there, especially since there's like there's multiple variants of of a lot of his special moves based on the based on the um amount of charges that he has. Mm -hmm. Um, exploding de exploding death and soul burner especially. I do wish I had the uh. The expansion of uh, the supplement because there is a character that uh, can build up or an archetype that can build up stocks coming up that I think would also fill up fit well for that. Technically, the stocks are more like Street Fighter Five jury as they all have a unique effect, but mm -hmm. it does allow for some of that. Oh, I have Osura too. There's some good stuff in the supplement. Can't really talk about it because it's not going to be finalized, but um, this definitely does seem like an Osra character if they were out as it is a character that is all around increasing their ability to combo and do damage by gaining multiple types and the multiple copies of different tokens um, to eventually reach Divinity, uh, which is very much inspired by the older Soul, Order Soul playstyle. Yeah. And of of course the of course the big disadvantage with with um with it with him is is the is the fact that there's so much there's so much focus on being aggressive and up and up close that he doesn't have a whole lot when it comes to range. Mm -hmm. um, that will happen. Next is the the big the biggest kabuki reference in the whole thing which is saying something because oh. the, because the because of the kuroko refs that that have shown out throughout the, throughout the series um kyoshiro kyoshiro uh and that is, is that the oh clown boy and ju beautiful, just beautiful to just to reference boy. the the Kurokos are are the are the guys in black outfits who are holding the who hold the flags in a lot of the games. Yes, they are. Kuroko is it are essentially um, stage hands for a lot of Japanese theater. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. You know because because usually it's a it's meant they're meant to be on a black backdrop with with all that with all that stuff and not talk. Yeah. Um. Obviously, some some forms of theater you're going to see them less. It's a little hard to have to get away with black in kabuki because kabuki is meant to be loud and colorful. Yeah. Um... Uh, in a roundabout way, kabuki isn't is kind of downstream from wrestling. Oh. Um. How is this guy? What he? The thing I always hate about these these same show characters is, is like they have the, the the these funny designs, but then they're just like, yeah, they have good normals, and then they hit you, and then you die. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know. It's like how do I how do I taste that? How do I how do I? It does it does make it it does make it good for what this little experiment was intended to do, though. 
Mm -hmm. see how how much i could get into that uh that like design space mm -hmm. with it oh i can summon a big frog you say <laughs> oh. <laughs> well now that's something that's something i can work with but i would say I would say when it I would say when it comes to him, the vibe I get the vibe I get from Kyoshiro is tr is um trying to is essentially an is an anti air but not in the typical approach. It's okay. an anti air that is that spends a lot of time trying to bait people into jumping. Mm. Okay, kind of like uh the way a lot of people use fireballs with Shoto's like um. Throwing out some long range threat and then being like, ah, yes, I got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in terms of achieving that that goal uh, and making that into your play mm -hmm. style, I imagine you would have to, you would have no choice but to pick uh, a battle witch as they have the ability to set up the slow projectiles that you can jump over. Um, I think the only real option in the game that can create that exact situation is Battle Witch, with their two different methods of doing that. Um, and then I guess that that's your frog? Uh, oh, they also have the fireballs. And the, the little water things. They got a lot of projectiles, actually. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's like both Ranger... Is it Juggernaut Battle Witch? Because Juggernaut does have the strongest dedicated anti-air option. He doesn't. He doesn't strike me too much as a ju as a jugger. The only Definitely he, not. That's why I'm. I'm. I'm, I mean, I'm so apprehensive. He's sluggish, but he's not a big. He's not big body slow boy. That is true. But if you just take the two levels and then don't use the stance, then I guess you could. It would be so weird and such a weird investment of levels. But this is a weird guy. Yeah. So you know what? Maybe maybe it's fitting. So it you... also would let you make the 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 crab uh, a stronger fan grab, or the, not the crab, the frog. Because <laughs> like, I do see the frog is unblockable in this uh, description. Yeah, um, he's. I've I've seen some people make some make some comparisons between him and um, Jiraiya, which I know some of you are thinking Naruto. I'm not. I'm not going with that. I'm going with Jiraiya, as in the gallant tale of Jiraiya. Mm. I thought Naruto. <laughs> just, just see, so just so you all at home know that you've got a, you've got an ally here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd say I'd, I would say prob, I would say probably, probably Battle Witch and Ranger, but leaning a bit more into Ranger since a lot of his stuff is meant to play key. Yeah. Not keep away, but keep out. Oh, okay. Oh, but next is Mina. All right. Mina hitches her. Uh, what is this Mina character like? Oh, she's got a bow. She's got a huge fucking bow. Jesus Christ, that is a long bow. Have you, ever, uh, have you ever seen a Yumi bow? I have They're, not. They tend to be pretty big. Let me get. Let me give you. She looks like a harp. This is this is a good. Re those sort Ooh. of bows that are used in Q, in U, used in Kudo, those tend those tend to be pretty large. Yeah, they look at Jesus. Um... Oh, this is a ranger if I ever saw one. <laughs> Does she have different arrow types? She has different arrow types, then we can fucking wrap it up there. It's just a ranger. But if not, then I'll have to look at it. Some... No. No Mina, different arrow types? Or Mina, stri Mina strikes me as, as, ra as ranger as you can get in this series. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is just, oh, these are all just, these are all ranger moves right here. <laughs> I'm looking at these moves and I'm like, yep, 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 ranger, 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 ranger. 
Ranger, Ranger, Ranger. We don't have an anti-air shot, but the shots do an the all of the shots are anti-air shots, because they're not grabs. The grabs are only things I can't anti-air. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's... This is a Ranger right here. <laughs> so, next is Nakotaru, who's, oh, really? been, who's okay. been one of the poster girls for quite, for quite a bit. Oh, yes, I recognize this character. She's got the bird. Mm -hmm. The bird, she got the knife, too. Is she in Smash? I think she's in Smash Bros. On, like, a stage. Uh, She's also, she's in KOF, isn't she? The new KOF. Uh, KOF. She's been around, so possibly. She's all over the place. Um, She's got one of the, one of the... Uh, she got a lot of ninja moves. She's got the, the ninja wall jump. She's got the ninja air grab. Mm -hmm. This is a ninja, alright. Oh, she can fly on the bird? That's sick. Oh my god. This is another instance of I need to release this expansion soon because I, I, I'm i working on one. I'm working on an archetype in it called the Cherub. And it's all around being able to float for extended periods of time and get benefits for it. They have like flight counters, and they can lose them to do like a wave dash. And they they've got like death from above. And there's literally a move called death from above in this character's kit. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, that's just the the text they use in the thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is unfortunately I'll have to uh classify it as probably like um battle witch for the 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 bird deployable birds. Uh, and uh, Ninja, when I should be uh, classifying it as Ninja Cherub. Yeah, but that's not out yet. We can't, we can't use that, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Ninja Battle Witch it is. Um, but next, uh, next up... It... Rimeru. Yeah, who... I was kind of fifty fifty about what about whether or not I'd whether or not I'd add her to the add her to it because oh she isn't too far she isn't too far removed from from her from um from Nako oh okay. I feel like, if anything, this is the actual ninja battle witch because she's got fucking ice magic. She is a witch. Um, I'll make this one dancer battle witch to to make them different. There we go. <laughs> I could, I could, I could see that. I could see that. Um, it's also the, fr also I I do I do like that it brings up that somebody could stall because it because the. The ice magic could make her hard to actually catch. Mm -hmm. So, everybody knows that one bastard who will get who will um get advantage early on and then play keep away until the timer runs out. A hey, illusionist battle witch players, we love them. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a uh, definitely maybe illusionist instead because it seems like a lot of those lingering ice things could work better as illusionist uh uh analogs than battle witch actually since they don't have a lot of movement unlike the bird mm. so maybe this is a dancer illusionist where uh, nako is more of a uh battle witch uh ninja mm -hmm. mm, sounds about right to me yeah I both guess. of the there is is there an ice elemental mage actually let me see I think it might just be water. That could work too. That that's fine. I think it, it kind of is based on like the stunning as an archetype, so it's yep. it's okay. Yeah, she can get water elemental mage. Mm -hmm. So next up on the list is Shiki. Shiki, this is the character that you like. <sighs> yeah. She's got knives. And. Um, oh, she is de she is definitely a rush down in. <laughs> There, there, there's no get, there's no getting around that. Yeah. Oh, she got purple visual effects. This is a villain. Mm. Villains are purple. We all know this. It's complicated. Let I'll Ooh. leave it at that. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, uh, she's got a Rekka, which is cool. Um.
And she's got a, a grab. Well, this is a Kuma. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is fun. Okay. Yeah, I think. Ironically, maybe not Ninja. She doesn't actually seem to have a lot of retreating movement, um, like a lot of the other Ninja characters. Uh, she seems more so based around just getting in, setting up pressure, and killing you. Mm -hmm. Big killing. Um. Yeah, a lot of Link moves. Link is typically the mechanic I use to represent Rekkas, which basically lets you combo into it off of anything, normally conditionally. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they'd probably want to take up whatever Link options they can, or whatever options to enable Link, so probably things like Momentum, and then going into Dancer for Rapid Blows, which is a good pressure extender, and the ability to just have more benefits from advancing, which will uh, trigger Momentum. And maybe Bastard? Because she seems to have a lot of good options up close to mix you up, and Bastard excels in that. Mm. They got Toe Stomp for also uh, blockables. They got also tablet. having one of the more ridiculous um, supers. Ooh. Uh, anywhere on the screen. Oh, okay. Oh. There is actually the Blade Sage ultimate. If you wanted to d like burn three of your levels to just get a more accurate ultimate, the Blade Sage does have an ultimate that extends all of your moves to have infinite range. <laughs> so that um that would, would let you do that. Would you go pure Blade Sage with her? Nah, I don't think so. I think that's just if if you could, if you had like three spare levels to get the accurate super. But otherwise, I think Blade Sage is too much focused on staying actually like an arm's length away from your opponent where this seems very much like classic uh bastard dancer like rush down play style mm -hmm. with uh mixing in momentum to get more and more benefits off of advancing on your opponent would you lean more towards dancer or bastard i think dancer in this case because we're going to build into momentum dancer's ultimate allows you to benefit from creating and closing distance so it let you just Move in, move in, move in, move in, and then get a f continuous value off of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so next is Shizumaru. Okay. Okay, let's look at Shizumaru. Mm -hmm. Shizumaru, who is this? This is the, this is the, the other Umbrella guy. Yeah. I think I know this character, at least a little bit. I've definitely seen them. They're one of the older ones. I got a wall jump too. Uh, this is these all these fucking ninjas. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I... Oh, they've got like a like a reflector uh, with yeah. the with the with the parasol. That's interesting. Yeah. I do get the vibe that we di that um um Shizumaru would dip a. A little bit into Battle Witch. Mm, okay. Uh, whether whether you, I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if you're in the if you're in the same mind mindset with it, but that's that's something that I'm thinking. For the uh, for the umbrella projectile that they have. They could take one level, but a lot of these other options they have seem to be more around weird, like air mobility and, and like moving around to different sides of people. Uh, of course, I'm not sure how that actually plays out when you play them, but in terms of just the tools they have, this actually does seem maybe like it would be like level one battle, which level three ninja. Uh, or maybe level 2 ninja, they, they're not super ninja uh, dedicated. Maybe 2 battle witch, 2 ninja, 1 dancer. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, this character has a lot of the wacky movement stuff that you would get from ninja and dancer. <laughs> but a bit of battle witch in there makes sense to me. I'm just not sure they're, they're so dedicated to controlling the screen that they need to be super focused on Battle Witch. 
Yeah, um... It is... Now, one of the, obviously one of the big things is crazy downpour, but... I... And that and that does and that does have a ch that does have a charge, but I wouldn't. But that's also the primary move that has one. Mm, okay. So I'm not. And it's um. It's a ch it's a charge. It's not exactly a charge timer in this in. In um, the se in the sense of some of the of some of the other ones we've talked about, okay. so I don't I don't I would I'm not going to bring up Order Soul again with when it comes to Shinsu <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but next up on the list is Sogetsu. Huh? Sogetsu is that's the water the water brother, right? Yes. Well, I guess you could also. I mean, you could make a flagellant because I mean, no, no. Actually, no. This hat seems way different from when I tried him out. And the other one, he kind of seemed just like the water version of his brother. But this seems to be a more so like space control based character. Mm -hmm. They got the the. They do have a teleport too, but they've got. Two different project, but three of projectiles, I think. They got the pillar and the two different projectiles. This seems like an illusionist battle, which a real bastard. They can teleport. They can apply an incredibly fast hitbox to a specific space on the screen. They can shoot a projectile. This is the this is the ultimate heaven or hell zone. This is the illusionist battle, which we've heard we've heard of in in the fucking ancient two poems. <laughs> I get the feeling you're not a fan of people playing. Playing illusionist battle witch. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan that uh, I had to be the one who plays this because no one else wanted to. <laughs> because everyone gets mad at you, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. No one wants to play this, but we have to figure out if it's broken, so I'm gonna play it. <laughs> well, there, every fighting game has that has that one guy who, if if you play him, you are a dickhead. Um, it was even worse before illusionists could set up like permanent walls and then make it even harder to get to them but now they they've they've got some more combo stuff so they're a bit cooler but still not uh still not something that everyone likes yeah. um i i i remember i remember playing brawl and everybody hated whoever was whoever picked meta knight oh yeah and tekken 3 of course had eddie and and um, whenever I whenever I played Dead or Alive, everybody hated it when I picked Brad Brad Wong because it was very very difficult to tell what to tell um to tell what angle for high lows he was gonna do. Yeah. Like it it there would be there was plenty of setups where it looks like he's aiming high and then he ends up aiming low. Yeah. Seems like a a bit, a bit of a bastard move. Uh, next up is Tam Tam. Mm, wait, what, again? Wait, did we do Tam Tam? No. Tam -tam. Cha no, that was Cham Cham. Cham, -cham. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> How could I forget? This is this is a goblin. This is a, this is. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy? Yep. Who's this Tam Tam guy? Um. So, uh, got a sword. Definitely showing down. Uh, he's he's got a counter. Oh, he has he has catch the blade. Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, <laughs> he's, he's one. very high risk. Um, uh, and is a lot of is a lot of poking and zoning, but I'd he I'd hesitate to say you're gonna you're gonna see the equivalent of fireball spam with him. <laughs> Okay. 
Wacky. Okay, so he's got the the like the low fireball, the diagonal fireball. Got a bunch of rapid hits and a command grab that bites you. Mm -hmm. Huh. I guess. Uh, hmm. I'd I'd say there's a lot of zoning and a, and a lot of um counter charging with him. Yeah. A good a good amount of his kit seems to have seems to heavily seems to heavily favor um, punishing people who who play aggressive and uh, and and playing keep and playing keep out himself. This is a weird combination, but this might be like a a, a, a battle witch bastard. The weird combination of not be, of not seeming to have a lot of like amazing mid range tools, but having good having like a command grab a unique command grab in close range as well as projectiles is something you don't see very often, but would make for a, a hell of a uh, battle witch bastard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that works. And then maybe for the talent, you go for like. I don't even know. Um, this is a wacky character, strange one. Yeah. Maybe just an additional lull, a mimic technique. That's probably. I uh, go for aims fire because he got a bunch of fire moves. There we go, bam. Yep. And next up is um, Ukyo. Ukyo, sickly Who, boy. If, how Hamaru is meant to be a nod to um. Musashi, then Ukyo is meant to be a bit of a nod to um, to Kojiro. Okay, okay. Um, in fact, Ko in some of the previous Sam Show games, Kojiro, what not Kojiro, um, Ukyo was a pain in the ass. Ah. Um. Okay. Yeah, Ukyo's a bit... I think Ukyo may just be, like, the perfect ar archetypical um, Blade Sage. They have a lot of, like, lunging sword moves. They've got, like, a setup thing. They've got a... They've got a... a looks a little, I think they've got a parry. Yeah. No, am I um, wrong? Yeah. Tsubame Gaishi is... So, is something that is part of the reason why he was so... In, why he's been so infamous, because of... Of how, of how there is so there's so much mix up potential with it. Mm hmm There's huh. also the fact that while it while it slowed while it slowed down in 2019, it's always been infamously fast. Oh, well, we can TK it. Okay, I see. Huh. Okay. Hey guys, that is an interesting move. Of varying uses. I guess that'd be half. That have to be some sort of like low commitment attacking move because there aren't a ton of. Maybe they'd be like a faint step blade sage character because that would allow them to do low commitment attacks and do that sort of like uh safe like TK uh Sume Gaishi stuff. Uh, oh, if I was writing out a sheet key. for Ukyo, I'd probably put in a rule that anybody who's playing Ukyo um must must um must have an apple on the table. Mm -hmm. That's important. <laughs> Gotta make sure you can throw it in the air and cut it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that sounds alright to me. Yeah, but I'd say I'd say he's I'd say Ukyo is probably the most pure mix, probably the most pure mix up you're gonna find in this. Okay.
So I'd would you still ha would you have him as a pure bl as a pure blade sage? I think, I think he's got to be blade sage still. Like maybe it's with some other like one bastard move thrown in there to be super geishi, but I think that like he's just too much of a blade sage in every other way. I'm get I'm guessing how cuz we already had um we had Charlotte as a pure blade sage. Mm -hmm. So I'm get so how would you, what would you do differently with Ukyo in comparison? I think that where Charlotte w would be based around uh, getting things to secure that mid range game plan, getting like a, a pushing reversal and things like that. Ukyo, I would probably have build into just an optimal combo, uh, as actually a lot of other Blade Sage players on the Discord do. Um, where you take uh, other moves from different archetypes that slot in perfectly to your combo, so that when you get that perfect that perfect finish, that perfect hit, um, you can go into as much damage as you can, even though it's a bit more risky. Yeah, the 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 big disadvantage with him is is the fact that um if is is that um as great as great and, and with all the different variety of things you can do with Subame Geishi, um it is a gamble. And if you mm. do, if you um if and as with any gamble, sometimes you lose your shoes. Of course. So, it's it's great, but don't but but don't treat it like a get out of jail free card. Yeah, sounds about right. So, next is Wan Fu. Wan Fu, okay. Uh, I I actually looked at this guy first when I looked at the thing just because it looked so fucking goofy. Um. Oh goodness. Uh, okay, yep. Yeah. Well, this is a juggernaut. <laughs> I was wondering what would we find one. But you tell them that they got a big, like, fucking, uh, like, suplexing command grab, and they're a big buddy. That's three levels of juggernaut right there. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> um. However, the long range, like, pillar stuff is also fun. Assuming if it's, like, a tier three character, you get two other levels to spare after those three levels in juggernaut. Maybe you could put them into like um Maybe you could even put them into like Ranger if you want. Cause that's a huge, huge weapon. Um And I don't want to just put in more blade sages, because I don't think this guy even fits the other blade sage moves other than just having longer range. Uh you could just put magical on one of his moves to make them longer range, but you know, that's boring. You gotta find archetypes to do shit. Yeah. Um like I see, um, I could see I could see someone dipping into Ranger with him, but mo but the majority of his stuff is ju is Juggernaut. Yeah, you slap it on the Juggernaut. If you got an extra level, maybe you get like one level in Ranger, and then just like have a poke option so so that you can do things safely in case you're you're at long range. Yeah. But this guy is uh, this guy's gonna command grab you and do thirty damage, and then you're gonna uh, DQ from the tournament. That's yeah. just the type of character that he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next is the warden who warden was a from for honor. Yeah, which for honor is an interest is an interesting beast in of itself that I'd li that I'd like to spend more time with in the f in the future. I want to check it at some point too, but I've just whenever I, I I find a way to play it, I have to sign up for EA's bullshit and then I quit the game and never touch it again. Um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft, yes, not EA. Which this is this is one of those tricky ones because Warden is very is one of those strong fundamentals type of characters. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like he's built around a mostly a Rekka parry and shoulder charge. Mm -hmm. 
Funnily enough, I think you take one level of Juggernaut on this guy, uh, because the armored step that sort of functions as an FADC and uh, shoulder charge do actually fit in with a lot of these moves. The parry does actually uh, kind of work uh, as the uh, it, the heavy step move that Juggernaut gets at level 1, and of course he has a shoulder charge. Um, it also fits with the whole idea of it being like a bigger armored character. Mm-hmm. So, so one juggernaut and maybe um fast like maybe this is like a like most fundamental sketches, maybe this is like a one level and four different classes type deal. Where it's like one juggernaut, one bastard, one like blade sage, one dancer. Um because it just, that way you can have a lot of replace options and just kind of make your base kit a little bit better in a lot of ways. If if I had, if I had, if I had to pick one to drop, to drop, and just put one, in, just put one in each, um, mm-hmm. it'd probably be dancer because ward, warden is is somewhat mobile, but I would, but I wouldn't exactly, I wouldn't exactly call him that mobile. Okay, yeah, that's fair. And with with the shoulder charge already from Juggernaut, then you're not going to need dancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Juggernaut, yeah. Bastard, and Blade Sage, I'd, I'd say is a good, um, I say is a good setup. Um, that feels about right, yeah. Yeah, next is Wu, who is... He's got the, 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 the big plate. The yeah. Wugong, that's what it's called, I forgot. Yeah, who seems to be seems to be more of a trapper. Oh, okay, okay. Um, not, not, not all that good at, um, at pokes, um, and because of the because of the trap, it makes playing neutral game a little bit tricky. A little bit tricky against her. Okay. Uh, With trap characters, I normally would say illusionist, but a lot of these seem to be just like kind of. Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah, this might just be illusionist. You're thinking like you're tiger thinking fangs. Pure, you're thinking pure illusionist. With the um. I think we have another bastard in our hands. I think we have an illusionist uh, battle witch because with her two um, the projectiles of the water and the fire projectile on top of the um, it's kind of weird anti air and the and the trap and the parry. The parry is very much like illusionist. This is this is a battle witch illusionist. If I ever saw one. Uh. There is, there is also the. F- I think something else that's interesting is being able to reflect projectiles with her. Okay, yeah, that is fun. I used to ha- I, there used to be an ability on uh, on Juggernaut that let you reflect projectiles like Pathemkin, but I ended up getting rid of it in favor for the armored step. Yeah, because uh, we had, we did Illusionist Battle Witch with Sogetsu. I'd say mm-hmm. I think these are very different characters, but so it's in terms of I, I think it's in terms of the illusionist tools they choose to use. Yeah. Well, so gets who I mostly picked it because of their teleport um, and their targeted attack, because illusionist has the ability to um, use shattering glass to make one of their mirror markers explode into damage, or use a grim reflection to teleport to a mirror marker. With this character, it seems just like they're going to be using a lot of energy on setting up a bunch of shatter, uh, setting up a bunch of shattering glasses, and um, using a lot of their other, using the body double and stuff like that to just get a bunch of damage off of any time the opponent like cracks and uh, gets into a setup cr- uh, wrong. Uh yeah, I'd I'd say Wu would probably lean more into illusionist than into um into battle witch, whereas so yeah. Getsu is kind of the opposite. I think I'd agree on that. Uh, but next is um Yashamaru. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Who is um te- who it who I guess they like, who. I could make I could make all of the all of the Tengu and Kenku joke jokes about him about him. Uh that that look kind of that 
you can't really you can't really argue you can't really argue he's got the beak and the wings <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what does this person do uh I think they got a lot of air specials. Well, he's also he's also he also has double jump, so you so you've got that. Oh, oh. this is just the, the, this this is a, a day where we mourn the loss of Cherub not Cherub not being in the game yet. <laughs> this guy is a ninja Cherub, or maybe like a like a blade sage Cherub, um, dancer Cherub even. And I just can't, I can't say anything else about that, that's just how it is, I think. Without Cherub, you probably want to give them a bunch of leaping moves and make it so that they're all pretty much always in an air state, as leaping is a specialty you can add onto anything to make it so that you can cross up people, you can gain invincible if you're right next to them, you can um, fucking become airborne, obviously, close some distance. It's just a very versatile thing in terms of uh, when you want to manipulate your movement. Mm-hmm. With the downside of it becoming incredibly unsafe if it fails. Yeah. Which, you know, there in is, theme with a lot of these aerial mix-up characters. There is one line on the wiki that I, that I find interesting. Mm. To put it simply, he isn't good because he has strong tools. He's good because he's efficient at dealing with other characters' strong tools. Mm, okay. Hmm, okay. That is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, he is reliant on the rage system, which we haven't touched on all that much. Yeah, I don't know much about it, but it does seem like a sort of uh, like low health activate. Yeah, sort of that, like that. That, that's also the reason why I why I didn't um co why I didn't cover it. It's more the it's more the fact that when when he uses that his use of rage um drastically changes his kit. Um, mm. In a roundabout way, he ends up reminding me of Gabranth in Dissidia P in the Dissidia PSP games. Oh, okay. Where once he got into EX mode, his playstyle changes completely. Uh, I would say I would say my my mind keeps saying um, Ninja and Dancer. Ninja Dancer, and maybe with a hint of Flagellant with that Rage Mode thing, because Flagellant does actually have an ability um, where they can, like, uh, permanently buff themselves at low health. Well, I guess everyone does, because that's how ultimates work. Dancer also has a thing like that, maybe. Yeah, I think Dancer's probably better, because Dancer has an ultimate that gives them buff for the rest of the match, or pretty much it's always going to be the rest of the match um, when they can use their ultimate, which is normally at low health, unless you are down around, in which case you get an extra ultimate use at any point of health. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, you're right about that, Dancer Ninja. And lastly, we have, um, Yoshitora. Yoshi. Who was, who, um... Aw, oh, dumb hair guy! <laughs> with all the swords! Yeah. Way too, way too many, way too many swords, but, um... <laughs> Put as much effort into looking good as you do into collecting swords. Maybe you wouldn't have hair like that. Yeah. What does this guy actually do? He is a. Rekka Strikes character? Oh, he's got a good. This guy's a bastard. <laughs> yeah, he. You'd... This guy took three level in bastards, and then he slept. Slept the day away. That's all he needed. So, so pure bastard in this case. I think so. A lot of powerful strikes that allow for mix-up, not amazing movement. Uh, that is like anti-specials and a command grab. That's all. That's all bastard, baby. What bastard does? Bastard sets up mix-ups and then makes you cry. Yeah, I could, I could certainly, I could certainly see that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, even though we focused on archetypes with this, there's a whole, there's a whole lot more to cons to consider. Mm -hmm. 
I think we had time to go into everyone's talents, so I tried to mention it when I thought it was most relevant. But yeah, the, the talents and specialties behind these characters, and also the stat arrays that you would choose uh, with them, I think would change them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But... The... But, um... I'd say, I'd say if there's any, if there's any takeaway, it's that it'll probably be, once you release that expansion, it'll probably be easier to do a lot of the characters with it, within this. And, yeah. um, if I'm being honest, if I was, if I was running a Sam show themed, um, tournament, one of the things I would, one of the things I would probably, I would probably end up doing is splitting people's kit into, to, to um, to cover WFTs, uh, wep i.e. weapon Yeah. Clips. I think that definitely, if you wanted to do something that Samurai should have you'd probably want to make some general system changes to facilitate more of those. I, I do agree. I think there are some pretty interesting ways you could do that. Like, you could make it so everyone's forced to use the basic uh, four techniques if they get their weapon flip, uh, since, like, that, the rest of your techniques provide you with your unique moveset, which would only be provided from a weapon in these sorts of games. Weapon flip is meant is meant to be this this strong special that you dr that makes you drop your weapon afterwards. Mm -hmm. And... Some and um because of, because of that some ca I wouldn't want to I don't think it'd be a good idea to have it where after using it you you um you're at you're at a total disadvantage mm -hmm. more that more that you're do more that you're doing a different approach okay so I'd pro I'd I would I wouldn't have it that you that you're just doing basics only until you re until you rearm. Mm, oh. Okay, maybe something more like the martial artist stances then, where you get a second technique dice. Yeah, that's that's the that's the approach I'd take. It it, it is going to make things a little bit crunchier, but it would be the best way to get to get that feel yeah. down. Um, I am I am thinking that um that with when it comes to when it comes to weapons, um. Like I'm trying. I'm trying to think if there's a way to replicate the whole, um, sl the whole sl um, slow speed but high damage approach that 2019 has. And within 2H, it's not really, it's not really capable of that. I think there is. There's one alternate rule I think might be a good, uh, like way to start that off, which is the. Um... The crushing cross counters rule, which makes it so that if you get hit while you're trying to attack someone, or if you get counter hit, uh, your opponent receives a fuck ton of combo as a bonus, and it's an enhanced version of combo that uh, makes you mean means you're you're pretty you're pretty fucked if that happens to you. And you could do something similar to that, but maybe just have it increase damage by a flat amount, as it's not really focused on on combos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not going to be easy to do this kind of thing, but it is. It is still Possible. doable. Um, mm -hmm. Though, I like doing these kind of things because because a lot of people when they ch when they approach the idea of adapting various IP into tabletop, there's always this argument of trying to of, ju of just trying to reskin a bunch of stuff, and that's no mm. fun. Yeah. Uh, I. I remember I remember watching a video where some where somebody where somebody was um was exploring the idea of adapting Scar from Full Metal Alchemist into the world's most litigious role playing game, and mm. make and they went with the idea of just making him a a, a monk, and how and um re and giving him a na giving him a natural spell to account to account for the whole destruction thing, and I'm like, that's boring. Yeah, I feel like D and D has really kind of conditioned people into that as it's a game that is intentionally made to be so that like the mechanics are loose and like flavorless enough that you can kind of convert it into anything, and it technically works even if it's not very interesting. Um, yeah, I hear I hear that I hear that a lot, 
and they don't that only seems to that only works in the broadest of broad strokes. Yeah. Um This is the reason why I why you why I bring up the um samurai conundrum. Um the most common way to equip a fighter is sword and board, but how are you gonna do that when you're dealing with a place where shields aren't a thing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and same go same goes for same goes for a wuxia based game where um where both mar well, both martial artists and offensive ma both martial arts and offensive magic is just different forms of kung fu yeah plus in plus in both of those cases the the wizard cloistered up in their tower isn't really a thing there's always the argument you can make, like, oh, there's the feat that lets you get magic as long as as well as being a martial class, or oh, you can take single weapon fighter on every character uh, to uh, make it so that you don't uh, the, you're not benefiting or you're not losing out from not having a shield. But then it's like pretty much all of those solutions are reducing the amount you can actually like express with your character because you're using up all of your like choices on just creating the basic like surface level concept mm -hmm. instead um, of playing a game where that is the point and you get to express yourself past that what you're referring to is what we call false choice yeah uh, and i've used the, i've used the whirlwind attack feed from third edition and pathfinder as a good as a big example of this just because of all the stuff that you need to get in order to you, in order to essentially do the kind of um, spinning attack that's been in every Legend of Zelda game since A Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. And well, the pro the problem with that is you're spent is you're spending so much time just getting to the basics before you get into any sort of specific expression. Yeah. Um, and I do, but I do think, and of course, some. Um, there's been plenty. There's been plenty of fighting of fighting game RPGs o over the years, and we've we we've talked about some of them. But a lot of them go the full freeform approach, which certainly gives a lot of freedom. But it all, but much like doing um, a universalist RPG, it comes at a price. <laughs> And that price typically ends up being um, choice paralysis. Yeah, they they often create a lot of uh, like these enormous um, content rosters that are really hard to parse as someone who hasn't already played the game. Mm -hmm. I am uh, a victim of this myself. I have my first uh, game is. Just like a, a two hundred page content roster with a bare bones RPG slapped on top of it, uh, <laughs> and I, I definitely see like the appeal as a designer of creating those sorts of systems. It gives you a lot of freedom in like just working on the things you enjoy, but it's also it, it can be it can be bad for games in the long term. Oh, I'm perfectly fine with with freeform. It's more a matter of un of understanding that there's no perfect solution. Each potential solution is going to have <laughs> its catch. You need to know your limits as a, as a creator and know like it, if you want to make a decision about like how you want to do your your game, then if you know like what the consequences of that could be, that's not really an issue. But if you're just doing things assuming it's all going to work out fine, then mm -hmm. you can you can dig yourself into a hole. Oh yeah. But that's going that's going to do it for the, for this particular experiment. Thank you for thank you for um going through with this with me. Thank you These for inviting kind, me on. This kind of concept is a lot of fun. I hope to revisit this with with a, with a different um game entry. I'm I'm. I intend to not go with something obvious. So if anybody's expecting mm. me to t to tackle um, Street Fighter or or um, Guilty Gear with this, uh, no. <laughs> uh, there's a whole there's a whole lot of of fighters out there that I th I think would be interesting to experiment with. Uh, 
But until but until next time, as always, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. Have a good one.